Alrighty, we're here with James Wade, half of the team who actually made it kite surfing from Tasmania all the way to Victoria in one piece. Now, Wadey, welcome to Kite Life. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Now, mate, I've got to ask, why? Why did you do it? Oh, it was just a challenge, and it was uh, an exciting challenge, and it hadn't been tried by anyone, and that was uh, enough incentive for us to go for it. Yeah. Now, talk us through your, your preparations and your training. How many hours of you know, prep and stuff on the water and off the water actually went into it? Actually, we trained for six months before the event, and the training was almost the highlight of, of the mission because uh, every day we'd just Ben and I'd go surfing or um, kiteboarding or boxing or bike riding and just have a reason to get fit was uh, was great fun to push ourselves. What about off the water? Like, did you think about, did you read old weather maps? Did you listen to old, you know, shark stories about Bass Strait and watch all those, you know, ships on, on the crossing and hear all the stories and get freaked out a little bit? I actually did the opposite. I didn't, uh, didn't do a lot of research at all because I knew I'd just spooked myself. And uh, Ben, really all of the logistics and the planning was done by Ben because he's, he's a professional sailor. He had a whole team on board. So I, all I had to do, and, and he said it to a lot of people with a chuckle, was just, just turn up and, uh, and do the event. I didn't have to, um, you know, uh, look at the weather maps. He was, had all of that under control. So it's good for me. Okay, we're on the uh, northwest tip of Tasmania at the moment, just uh, north of Cape Grim. We just got the uh, four-wheel drive after getting a little rubber boat around this point into someone's private land, and then here we are on this beautiful little beach. The wind's not too strong in here, but it should be strong out there. So once we get off the beach, 130 miles back to uh, mainland Australia. Simple house by the beach. I'm gonna burn it down. I'm gonna burn it down I'm gonna burn that house down Gonna burn it to the ground Cause today's the day Today's the day What well, I'm gonna do it my way And today's the day So you made it and you know it's a it's a fair effort so congratulations I mean <laughs> it's a long way. Yeah it was a long way I was about two hours into a 12 hour journey and my back leg because it was really rough sea my back leg just started aching I thought oh it's gonna be a very very long day, long day. And, uh, and, and the water was very cold because we went in September which was uh, you know still a very cold time of year. Um, and so, you know, but at the end of it, you know, I was really feeling the, the pinch, feeling the cold, and my muscles were cramping and aching quite Lactic intensely. Build up. Did you get, was there super big seas when you made the crossing or? Yeah, I think, it, I mean, by most people's standards, it was pretty big. The swell was about six to eight foot uh, between Tasmania and King Island, which is, you know, I mean, compared to kiting here in, in Melbourne in the bay, that's big sea. But mm. our training, we trained down on the west coast and, and Ben kept throwing me into the heaviest conditions we could find. Like we, we kited some 10 to 12 foot um, surf. Uh, but yeah, it was, you know, still rough sea and big swell but not breaking waves, so like rolling swells, so it's kind of a different experience to what you get when you kite down the coast here. Yeah, nice. Wadey's packing up his kite, and I think he's got a paddle in on his board, so um, really tough after 10 hours in the saddle trying to do this gear, but we can't help them out because it's an unassisted crossing, so. <laughs> You're doing well. Yeah, sure. You got about an hour of it. You guys got heaps of media coverage. Yeah, we closed the Sunday news, which was a nice scoop. And, you know, we were just blown away by the coverage that we received. And, uh, you know, when we got near, um, uh, when we got near the end, near Apollo Bay, and the uh, support boat was radioing Moz, and they said there's, you know, heaps of media on the beach, there's, um, you know, whole towns down here to see you. I thought they were exaggerating. And then a chopper came out, and I thought, oh, it's probably a police chopper or something. I saw the Channel 9 News on the side, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, so it was huge for Snickers. They said we were as big as Mr. T, which was pretty <laughs> all time. Oh, great trip. Past all the islands and uh, the scenery the whole way. It was perfect. 